This is Gear Diary with a quick overview of the PowerMat wireless charging system. We're going to take a look at both the home and office mat and the travel mat, show you a little demonstration of how it works, and give you a few thoughts about what we like and what might use a bit of improvement. The home and office kit comes with a, a whole host of uh, accessories. Um, definitely some nice industrial design went into this item. Uh, first there's the power mat itself which is small and light and just sits very flush and easily. Then you have the power brick which really has a nice nice way to keep the cord from tangling up. We'll take a look at that further in a second. An instruction manual and then you've got this adapter kit that comes with uh, both the travel and the home and desk kit. Um, you have this nice small adapter and various heads go onto this connector. There's an adapter for Samsung devices, one for the DSi, one for Apple devices, one which offers a micro USB, one for Sony devices, one for the DS Lite, and one for LG devices. And what's really quite nice about this is that if you have, let's say, Apple, and you have, for instance, something that uses a micro SD, and by the way, this is the mini USB. Uh, you can actually put them in here, close it up in this nice little travel case, and what's really quite nice is that this sits right on top and the two hold together as a travel unit. So you have this carrying along and you can actually charge two or three devices. So for instance with this I can charge my headsets that use the micro USB, my Blackberry Bold which uses uh, mini USB and also my iPhone and my iPod touch. This is the travel mat and let's pull this out. Um, it actually shows you you can use a Blackberry in one spot, a Nintendo DS here and an iPhone over here and it actually is a little bit less sleek but it also offers some really nice features if you want to have this on the go. Inside is the travel mat which actually folds up. It has the three spots but it folds up quite nicely and then it folds out if you want. Beneath that is the power cube, the same power cube that we looked at before which has all of the different tips that are useful in that way. Then there's the travel mat power case and inside is the instruction book, the warranty information, and the power cord as well. First off I had mentioned the, the power brick. Um, it wraps the wire quite nicely and when you unwrap it over on this end is the wall plug. So I, you know it's very nice to have something that actually wraps around itself and becomes just this large if you need to travel with it. And then you can just pull it out and there it is plug in the wall. Now there's a second part to this system and that is the pad itself enables you to charge but a device like the iPhone isn't equipped to charge using the magnets. So you actually have to do something to enable the device to be able to charge. And that's where we start getting into a little bit of trouble. For any device you actually need a special either case or back plate or you use the power mat adapter which kind of defeats the purpose because 
you're having to plug the device in all the time. This is good if you don't want to actually buy an extra case for something or in a pinch for something else, but you don't want to have to do that all the time. It defeats the purpose. So you want something where you can actually lay it on the power mat. That's where this comes in. So this is actually an iPod iPhone case, and it's two parts, and it really is much like an in-case slider. It's got rails. It's got the top piece with the cutout for the volume and mute, cut out for headphone jack and the power button, and cut out for the camera. The bottom of it has two ports for the speakers, which you can see coming through on the inside also, although channeling the speakers through this becomes a bit of a problem for some people. They say that the sound is muffled. And then you have a micro USB port for charging and syncing. So a nice feature is you can have the iPhone in here and you can charge and sync through it. And then it just snaps together. Now, as far as cases go, I actually really like it. It reminds me of the Mophie Juice Pack. It's got a little bit thicker base over here. It actually is flush with the iPhone, which I actually like, although it doesn't let you put it down without fear of scratching it. And even though the volume button and the silent button, silence toggle here, are recessed, you can still reach them. Not a problem. It adds some weight to the device, not a problem either, but it also adds this back, which kind of moves you away from the sleekness of the iPhone. But here's where the cool part comes in. So you take it and you just put it on, and it starts charging. How cool is that? You take it, and it starts to charge. Take it off, and it stops charging. And it starts to charge. And then there's another spot over here for it. I have to find it, because I only have one case. I haven't need to use it. So there's one, two, three. So conceivably, you can come home, and if you have an iPhone, if you're like me, I have an iPhone, I have a BlackBerry, bold, and I use an iPod Touch also because I just like the thin lightness of the iPod Touch, I could come in and conceivably throw all my devices, iPod Touch, iPhone, BlackBerry Bold, right there. So here's some of the issues. I like the case a lot, on a lot of levels. I like the sleek design of it. It actually looks and feels a lot like the Mophie Juice Pack Air which is the battery that I tend to use most often when I need a battery for my iPhone. In order to use the power mat, either one, you need to have the phone in this case, or you need to use the adapter. And the problem with using the adapter is it defeats the whole purpose of having this in the first place. I would be a lot more open to using this permanently because I actually like the way this case looks, even though it doesn't protect the face when it goes down on a table. I would be a lot more comfortable if it weren't for this piece on the back, which is going to be the case with the iPod touchback. It's going to be the case with uh, the BlackBerry uh, doors. It's not in a full case. It's just a door panel, but it's going to be this raised piece. And I would have been much happier if they had extended the whole back out so that it was smooth and even the whole way across, because that way... Yes, I'm giving up some of the thinness of the iPhone, but I don't have a problem with that if it's a little bit thicker. I don't like the feel of holding it with, with this piece. I do like the convenience of being able to just drop it on my desk. I can imagine having this on my desk in my home study and this at my desk at work and being able to just throw my devices on it and not have to worry about it. And, and I wouldn't have a problem buying individual cases which run 30 or $40, so this is a serious investment of money. Um, but the convenience factor would be great. Don't love this aspect of the design. Don't love it at all. Um, great concept, great device, great for somebody who uses multiple devices. If this doesn't bother you, this is a perfect thing to get. It really is.